Hi, in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to get the derivative of the area of a circle with respect to its radius. Okay, to start off, we first need some definitions. So A, that's going to stand for area. Okay, C is going to stand for circumference. And that is the perimeter of a circle. And R is going to stand for radius. Okay, and we know that the circumference of a circle is 2 pi R, which is also the same as pi times the diameter. Okay, so that's 2 times pi times the radius, which is the same as pi times diameter. We've also got the area of a circle, okay, and that's going to be pi r squared, all right? Now, let's name these diagrams over here. This circle here is going to have an area of a, and this red line over here is the radius. Now, the circumference of this circle is a function of r. So C is a function of R, and that is 2 pi R. And the area as well is also a function of R, and that is pi R squared. We say this is a function of R because pi is a constant. R is the only variable inside this formula. Now this circle to the right is a larger circle and this area inside the center, okay, is going to be called A and this over here is going to be called the radius, okay? Now if this radius expands, let's say it goes from the center of this circle over here all the way to the edge of the green circle, okay, it's going to mean that this length in red and blue is going to be r plus change in r, okay. Now if this circle with a black circumference expands in size, okay, then the area of the larger circle with a green circumference right, will consist of the area, which is A, plus a change in area, okay? So this part outside of this uh, circle with a black circumference, okay, is going to have an area of change in area, okay? Now the area of the circle to the left is pi r squared, the area of the circle with a green circumference is A plus change in A, okay? And this is the same as pi times R plus change in R squared, because for this circle here, that radius has expanded in size. If we expand this formula over here and break it down, then we can find the derivative of the area of a circle with respect to its radius. So let's expand this equation over here. This is going to give us a plus change in a is equal to pi times, that's going to be r squared plus 2 times r times change in r, plus change in R squared, okay? From here, we can expand further. So we get A plus change in A is equal to pi R squared plus 2 pi R times change in R plus pi times change in R squared. This is because we multiplied these elements over here. Okay, and we get this below. Now what we can do from here is subtract A from both sides of the equation. 
if you remember, a is equal to pi r squared. Okay, so these over here can be removed if we subtract a from both sides. What that now leaves us with is change in area is equal to 2 pi r times change in r plus pi times change in r times change in r because change in r times change in r is change in r squared. The next step here to find the derivative is to divide both sides of the equation by change in r. Okay, so that means we're going to get change in a over change in r is the same as 2 pi r times change in r over change in r plus pi times change in r times change in r over change in r. We are going to apply limits to this, but before we do that, we can break this equation down even further. We've got a change in r over change in r over here, and that gives us 1, so these can be cancelled out. We've also got a change in r over change in r over here. So that gives us 1, and these can be cancelled out. If we simplify further, we get change in a over change in r is equal to 2 pi r plus pi times change in r. Now we're going to apply limits to get the derivative. What we say is as change in r approaches 0, change in area over change in r approaches dA over dr. That's the complete derivative. What we also get is change in a over change in r approaches 2 pi r. Okay, now this value of change in r becomes so small that you can neglect it, okay? So you don't need to really worry about this change in r over here because it becomes virtually zero. And pi times something that's virtually zero is nothing, right? So we can remove this part over here from that equation and we end up with dA over dr is equal to two pi r because these two values over here are going to be the same when change in r approaches zero. So to end the proof, we say dA over dr is equal to 2 pi r. That's going to be the same as a prime r, which is just another way of saying dA over dr. And that gives us 2 pi r, which is, remember, the circumference, okay, which is a function of the radius. So when we get dA over dr, we actually get the circumference of the circle that we're dealing with. If you have any questions regarding this video, leave them in the comment section and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. If you'd like the workings for this proof, visit the link below this video that will take you to my Twitter account. For more mathematics content, visit mathematics.proofs on Instagram. Thanks for watching this video and see you next time.